True wireless earbuds have come a long way, and there are some really great premium ones you can buy out there, but which ones are actually the best of the best? Now, in this video, I'll be breaking down the differences and comparing head-to-head -head five of the best premium true wireless earbuds to show you guys how crazy the differences are and that price doesn't actually mean it's going to be better. Now, these are all very, very different from price to sound quality, to noise cancellation, to features, the microphones, and I'll be testing all of that out in this video. I don't want to make this subjective. I'll be actually be testing and showing you guys so you can see for yourself how different these actually are. And the ones I'll be talking about in this video, I have five of them right here. I have, of course, the Bang & Olufsen E8 third generation. They just came out. They are, they are the most expensive of this group, coming in at $350. Then I have the classic AirPods Pro, some of the most popular ear earbuds on the market today. You'll see these absolutely everywhere you go. People love them, but how do they stack up against the other ones that are also very premium? Then I have the Sony WF-1000XM3, annoying name to say, yes, but uncontested in the past year. These are some of the best earbuds and they have been kind of the reigning champ since they came out for their incredible sound cancellation and sound quality and of course battery life. And I'll talk about all of that later on in the video. Then we have the Jabra Elite 75T and Jabra Elite Active 75T coming in at the cheapest out of this group, but they have some really incredible features for their price and are definitely on the premium side of earbuds. And then lastly, we have the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 2s, which may be the new king based on their specs. They have some very, very impressive specs with active noise cancellation. They fixed all of the problems they had with the original ones, including battery problems and connection. Now they still have that incredible sound quality and many other features I'll talk about in this video. And an honorable mention that I will touch on here and there is the Galaxy Buds Plus. I'm not including these in the full review here because they are more of a mid-range pair of earbuds and I'll make another video about that later on. But because these are really good for a mid-range pair of earbuds, they have some features that I'll touch on here and there when they start to compete with the premium ones. Also, I just wanna say before anybody gets upset that some other pair of earbuds wasn't included in this video, I had to draw the line somewhere and I just chose these five as my five top premium earbuds. And that's not to say other ones like the Master and Dynamics aren't great or the Galaxy Buds, um, but I just had to draw the line somewhere. So if you wanna see more comparisons for mid-range earbuds or budget earbuds or like individual earbud comparisons, comment down below. Let me know what you guys wanna see and then click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss those videos. Okay, so category number one is the mechanical design. And I wanna do this one just so you guys know what we're talking about here. And I'll do these in order based on what I think is best. So. Number one, my favorite design is the Jabra Elite Active 75T earbuds. It's a very compact, very small case, a really nice finish on there, kind of a soft rubber coating. And I like how it opens on the top so it can sit upright on a table. The buds are right there. They have, they're very, very small buds, very small case, but still an incredible battery life that I'll talk about later. And these fit very far in your ear. They're very comfortable and they have a physical button on the outside, which is very nice if you're outside and it's cold, you're wearing gloves, or if your hands are wet, or literally any other time that you don't want to use a capacitive touch sensor, you can just, like the buttons are a great alternative to have on these earbuds here. On, as far as colors go, these have many different colors and I think all of them look really good. This one's copper and black. Number two then is the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 2. The case is a little bit larger and the buds are also a little bit larger, but I really like the design of this. A really nice lid where it, you know, it sits open like that, just like the Jobbers kind of did. And on top of that, they do have a nice fabric finish on the outside of the case. I think it looks very nice, very premium. And there are two colors. There's a grayish white one, and then this is the black one. So they both look really good. And these also have touch sensors as well. Number three then is the Apple AirPods Pro. The case on this is very strong, very robust with an excellent hinge on the back. They have Qi wireless charging. And when you flip it open, one strange thing is that you can't really set it upright with the, with the AirPods there. Instead, it's gonna be like kind of at an angle when you set it on a table. And then the buds themselves have that stem right there. So a very different aesthetic here that is very polarizing. Some people love it, some people hate it. So, I mean, comment down below what you guys think of the AirPods look here. But as far as controls go, this is also very different from any of the other ones we're talking about. They don't have physical buttons and they don't have touch sensors instead. It's a force or pressure sensor. So you're gonna be pinching a little straw right there, the little stem. Mechanical design number four is the Bang & Olufsen E8. I chose this one as number four mainly because I like how the leather looks. This also has Qi wireless charging on the bottom. It's available in black or gray. And these also have touch sensors on the earbuds as well. And then lastly, number five is the Sony's, which has the largest case and the largest earbuds. 
definitely some really nice colors. They have two different colors you can get. And this one's kind of like a goldish and a tan. I think it looks really nice, except they definitely are pretty large. Okay, so the next category I want to talk about is the call quality. So I'll do a test indoors and then we'll go outside and see how they sound in a noisy environment. Okay, so starting off number one, this is the Sennheiser True Wireless 2s in a studio environment. So number two then is the Sony's. This is what they would sound like if I was on a phone call, again, indoors in a studio environment. This is the Jobber Elite Active 75Ts, the microphones, if we're talking indoors, see how they sound. All right, and then this is the AirPods Pro if I was on a phone call indoors just to see how these would sound. Okay, so we're outside right now next to a road, so we'll see how good these earbuds actually sound when there's traffic. You can see some cars going by behind me. So if I was talking on a phone, this is what it would sound like. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Okay, so this is the Sennheisers, and it's a little bit noisy out here. There's some traffic, some church bells behind me somewhere and it's a little bit breezy, so we'll see how good these sound. Okay, now these are the AirPods Pro with some traffic behind me and again, church bells. A little bit breezy out here, so we'll see how good these sound. Okay, and these are the Jabra Elite Active 75G. Some traffic, these church bells seem to be going on forever and it's also a little bit breezy still. Okay, and lastly, we have the Sony earbuds. More traffic, a uh, little bit breezier now than it was. But these church bells, like I swear, they've been going on for like five minutes now. So next up, something that a lot of you probably care a lot about, this is the sound quality comparison here. And this can be a little bit subjective, so I'll break things down as analytically as possible. But depending on the music taste you have, your ear shape, and, and the type of uh, balance you want on your audio, you could have a different response to these than what I had. But I would say, ranking these in order, number one, the best, the clear winner, I would say is definitely the Sennheisers. And I think most people testing these would agree with me that the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 2, they have a really balanced audio profile just right out of the box. You can EQ it, but you really don't even need to for the most part. They're very warm, very rich, very detailed, and very analytical audio. They're using app decks, so you do have that very hi-fi uh, sound when you're listening to music. If you're listening to Tidal, uh, you know, Spotify is going to be great as well, but if you're listening to Tidal, you can really flex these. Ne number two, then, is the Sonys. These do not have app decks, but Sony definitely makes up for it with some internal uh, little tricks they have up their sleeve. But the sound quality on these is also very analytical, maybe not quite as sharp as the Sennheisers, but I think the untrained ear may not even be able to really hear the difference. Then the audio profile of these, they do have an accent on the lower bass, so really, really thumpy bass, and they have an accent on the higher vocals. So when you have that kind of shift right there, it kind of gives you like a high definition, like an HD effect on the audio. It sounds really good. Uh, and something really great about the connectivity with these is that unlike the almost all of them, I'll point out the other one that's also like this, they have single point connection, which is I think way better than master slave connection like we see on the other three, but having a single point on here is really nice to have that. Then this one, I am actually gonna call this a tie at number two, not because this necessarily sounds the same as the Sony's, but at, because it sounds so different, it depends on your taste. Number two, I'm gonna say the Jabra's right here, mainly because of their bass. And so if your taste is you wanna to listen to EDM or rock or rap, and you just want an insane amount of bass, you just want seismic bass with incredible volume that is just gonna be a skull shaking bass, then you want to get the Jabra's. And again, these have master slave connection. These do not have app decks, but you just won't find bass like this on any other pair of earbuds. Number four then is the Apple AirPods Pro. These don't really compete as well with the top two as far as sound quality goes because these have more of a spotlight on higher vocals between 1000 and 1200 hertz so great for podcasts or phone calls or if you're listening to like coffee shop type acoustic music and you just want to hear that like that frequency range right there but as far as bass goes these really don't quite deliver anything thumpy even if you change the eq i don't find that the bass on here delivers quite as much as the first three and then unfortunately in last place, which the most expensive one here, they do have Aptex on there. So excellent codec, it should be really good. But the reason they're in last place, the Bang & Olufsen have a weird hiss going on when I'm listening to them nonstop. It's this white noise hiss in the background. It's really not what you like to hear. And the audio profile on these is not something I was especially happy with given the price point. Now, if these were cheaper, it's definitely not bad, but compared to the rest, these are definitely very bright and kind of thin sounding in my opinion. Uh, it's a little bit of a weak separation and they have a dip somewhere around maybe like 150 hertz. So the high bass 
generally kind of is a little bit weaker with these. There is some thump on the low bass if you really crank it up, but it can be a bit muddy because you're cranking it up so much in the EQ. Something to note, all of these have Bluetooth 5.0, except for the Sennheisers and the Bang & Lufsen have Bluetooth 5.1. You might not really notice the difference with those, but it's nice to be a little more future-proof. Okay, so next up is noise cancellation, active and passive. And what I wanna do here is just kind of play some white noise on my computer, and I'll show you what volumes I can and cannot hear. This is by no means a perfect test, but should just kind of illustrate to you the relative power of the active or passive noise cancellation for these, just to really kind of reduce the subjectivity of this. But I will also explain what they sound like uh, in my own terms as well. Okay, so starting off with the AirPods Pro, I'm just gonna turn the volume up and let you know when I start to hear it. So right around volume 24 is where I start to hear the sound from this video. And honestly, the AirPods Pro do a really good job of blocking out all sound, pretty much dropping everything evenly. So typically ANC just drops like the bass out of things, but the AirPods drop out higher frequencies as well. So higher pitch voices, I know I said before like female voices uh, get blocked evenly with male voices instead of other ones which only block male voices really. Um, so definitely also very comfortable. There's really no white noise and it's a really subtle, uh, everything's just quieter, it's very comfortable. Okay, so now with the Sennheiser Buds, again, I'm just gonna turn the volume up and see where I start to hear it. So here it seems to be about volume 30s where I start to hear that sound. So the Sennheiser Buds, I would say, are probably the most powerful active noise cancellation out of all of these from what I've seen. Uh, and they do an excellent job of cutting out lower frequencies. So engines, traffic, just really low uh, ambient sounds totally go away. There's a really slight amount of white noise and it doesn't really cut out the high frequencies as well as the AirPods do but overall definitely very, very impressive with these earbuds. Now let's take a look at the Jobber Elite Active 75Ts. These don't have active noise cancellation, so purely passive. Let's see where I start to hear this. About volume 14. So clearly not at the same level as the active noise cancellation, but definitely they do a really good job for passive noise blocking. So next up, the Sonys. These were previously kind of deemed as like the king of active noise cancellation. So let's see how these perform here. We'll just turn up the volume again. For these, it seems like right after volume 24, maybe closer to 26, is where I start to hear things. And these definitely do a really good job. It's a very clean cut, really no white noise on these. Maybe not quite as powerful as the Sennheisers, in my opinion. Uh, that's actually really impressive because these, for a long time, have easily been the best and most powerful active noise cancellation. All right, and lastly, the Bang & Olufsen E8. Let's see where we start to hear things. These don't have active noise cancellation, only passive noise blocking. So, turning it up. And unfortunately, it's like volume 10 actually is where I start to hear things. So these aren't blocking out nearly as much as the Jabra's and obviously without ANC, can't really even compete with the other three. So next up is comfort. And this is where I said that the Galaxy Buds would get a, an honorable mention right here. I think these are the most comfortable that I've been wearing, mainly because of the wingtips and they're very compact in my ears. But out of the five premium ones we're talking about, the Jabra's I think that win this one for me. Of course, everyone has different ears, but these I think will be a popular first because they're so small and so compact in your ears that if you choose the right tip, it's very unlikely these will fall out and they should be very comfortable for pretty much anybody. Number two then is very clearly the AirPods. These are so comfortable. They're not number one just because they stick out a little farther, so they're a little bit more likely to come out, but very compliant tips and very comfortable. And if you have an iPhone, they also have the ear fit test to make sure you have the right tip in your ear. Number three then is the Sennheisers. They are way more ergonomic than the first generation. Still a little bit large, they stick out a little bit. So basic running should be fine, but any more dynamic workouts, if you're doing burpees or like a boxing workout, they may have a tendency to wiggle out of your ears over time. And similarly, the Bang & Olufsen E8 is just slightly less ergonomic, but almost a tie at number three. I'm gonna call it number four though, um, just because they do fall out a little more frequently for me when I'm running, but everyone's ear shape is different. And then the last place for ergonomics here and comfort is going to be the Sonys. I will say if you're sitting still, they're very, very comfortable and it would be much better but considering anybody who's walking around or at a light jog or even a significant run, these just stick out so much farther that they will be more likely to fall out of your ears. So next up is price, and this is interesting because they are so stratified. Number one, the cheapest one out of these is the Jabra Elite 75T at $180. And then for an extra 20, you can get the Actives, which is just some better waterproofing in different colors. Then number two we're gonna see is actually for $200, you can get the Sonys right now, or just over 200, maybe 220, depending on where you're looking. Mainly because they're a year old and they're so large that the price has really been dropping with these, but they're still a really great pair of earbuds as we've seen in this entire video so far. 
Number three is the AirPods Pro coming in at $250. They're about a year old now, and the price really hasn't budged, as it's pretty typical for Apple products like this. Number four, then, is the Sennheisers coming in at $300. And lastly, the Bang & Olufsen is $350 at the time of this video. If you want to see the latest prices, though, I will put links down in the description, so check those out if you're interested in seeing if the price changed for any of these. So the last category then is battery life and features. And I'm not gonna rank these one through five because it really just depends on what you're looking for in a pair of earbuds. So starting off with the Sennheisers, these have seven hours of battery in the buds, 28 when you include the case. They have auto play and auto pause feature. So when you take them out of your ears or put them back in to auto play and pause, all of these have that except for the Jabra's and the Bang & Olufsen. Just keep that in mind. Uh, they all have, actually all of these have transparency mode. These also have touch pads. Like I said, they have an EQ in the app. You can customize the touch pads all of them, so single, double, triple tap, uh, tap and hold on either earbud. So you have a lot of customizability with what you want the earbuds to do. Then looking at the Sony's right here, like I said, the NFC case on there uh, is for quicker pairing. They have six hours of battery in the earbuds, 24 when you include the case. It is significantly longer when you don't use active noise cancellation. They have adaptive sound control, so if you start walking, it, it'll go into a different setting or start running, or if you're sitting still, or if you're like on a train, it detects what you're doing, I think using the GPS on your phone, and it'll change to whatever you decide. So you say, when I'm walking, change it so that active noise cancellation is off, and instead transparency mode is turned up a little bit. They also have some pretty good integration with voice assistance. They have uh, customizable touch controls, um, and they do not have Qi wireless charging, as neither did the Sennheisers right there. The Jabras have seven and a half hours of battery in the earbud, 28 when you include the case, which is very impressive for how small it is. They have a Find My Buds feature, so if you lose your case, it'll actually use your, your GPS to remember last time you were connected. Then we have soundscapes. You can listen to some white or pink noise, or maybe you can listen to like ocean sounds, jungle sounds, all within the app. Kind of a cool feature to have right there. They have different modes, similar to what we saw with the Sonys, but not using GPS. Instead, you kind of manually say like, hey, I'm in uh, whatever mode. I'm on a, a commuting right now or at work or something like that. They are very waterproof. They have some pretty good voice assistant integration as well. And once again, no Qi wireless charging on these, unfortunately. The Bang & Olufsen then have some cool features. They have Qi wireless charging. They do have transparency mode. They have touch pads. Uh, and they do have that really nice leather case there. But otherwise, not really the extensive feature set you might be looking for for $350. Then, of course, the AirPods Pro may have the most different feature set out of all of these. Being Apple, they're always pretty unique. So four and a half hours of battery in the buds 24 when you include the case, definitely on the lower end of the spectrum with these earbuds here, but they do have Qi wireless charging. They do have some really good connectivity with Apple. So if you have an iPhone, you just open these up and they connect pretty much instantly as kind of like the Galaxy Buds do with the, with the Galaxy phone. So again, the Galaxy Buds do pretty well, similar with that. They have force pads, which is so unique right there. They have the fit test if you have an iPhone, so they can tell you if you have the right tip in your ear. They have adaptive EQ, they can summon Siri. Again, a lot of these features are really better if you have an iPhone, um, but for the most part, they do still work with Android phones. And then lastly, they do also have a pressure equalizing vent, so you shouldn't have a buildup in your ears. Kind of like what I said before, when you're using the active noise cancellation, it just feels very gentle and quiet. You don't hear any kind of white noise and there's never any kind of pressure buildup. All right, so that was a lot of information right there. Honestly, these are all great earbuds right here. I love listening to each of them for different reasons. If you're working out, the Jobbers are great. If you're casually listening to Tidal, like the Sennheisers are great. They're all great earbuds. But comment down below and let me know which one you like best and why. Even if you haven't tried them, let me know if you're buying any and why you choose whichever ones you choose. So as always, guys, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.